Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we are back for the second step in the training, in the trained, in the trained retrieve and our, in our second step of our formal retrieving work. We're in the second step of the trained retrieve process here. We're working through five different dogs so that you get the opportunity to see differences. I mentioned before, this is the biggest learning curve and we're trying to break that down and make it easier for everybody trying to do this at home with their dogs. <laughs> a baby refresher. Don't overdo this stuff. You need to keep the momentum of your session moving. We see straight away she's really comfortable. She's comfortable moving. She's comfortable eating. That's awesome. Now we're going to move on. Step number two is going to be working on hold. I have a little clip here. This is going to keep us at one end of the table. Some dogs, which we'll see this in a second, um, are too good at moving and some dogs are not good enough at moving so each one we have to kind of play to their strengths and weaknesses but we're going to clip her up at this end of the table so as we move into this second step we're going to be using our hand there's a couple different things that are important here we use fingers or hand first because there's a lot of problems that are, are caused by the dog's tongue that you don't know are happening unless you actually have something that you can get a response back and feel what's happening in their mouth. So if we just start with a bumper and we put that in there, she may be tonguing at it and I can't 100% tell that. With your hand, you can. We're gonna make this really simple. Two fingers typically are gonna go basically right behind the canines here. I'm gonna show you what this looks like in here. We're gonna be rolling right in this area and then we're going to help her to settle down and hold. And we're only looking for a baby split second and then we'll build off of that. Like everything in dog training that we do, we try and build off of success. The smaller steps that you take, the faster you're gonna get there, okay? Let's get rolling with tricks. Good. Um, two things that happened here. She took to that very quickly, not all of them will, okay? But then the next thing is I gave her a good as a marker. Typically we'd use a clicker this would be a time where you just don't have enough hands. So we will utilize a verbal marker, which we don't feel is quite as good as the actual clicker, but you saw the second I said, good. I also, with my other hand here, gave her a touch just on the side, and that's just additional communication with her. It gives a clear marker as we continue through this process. We're getting lips out of the way. You can see she's trying to get my fingers out of her mouth a little bit. Good. And you can see, as soon as I'm, I tap her and say, good, she's getting ready to spit it. That's perfectly fine. That's what we're asking. You did it right. We're going to try and build off of it. Good. Nothing's happening in her mouth. This is really, really good, okay? She's a little bit older dog, more mentally prepared for this type of training, figuring things out fast. We're going to move to our first object. We do not want to get greedy in our training sessions, but when if it goes this well with your dog, you're ready to move on. One of the most important things to keep in mind with this process is you need to move as fast as your dog is ready for without moving too fast. Um, moving too slow is a way bigger problem. Moving too fast is gonna show up. You're gonna see some confusion if you're moving too fast. If you move too slow, you're gonna have other problems. You're gonna create resentment, you're gonna create a dog that gets bored and that boredom is gonna to lead to newly developed bad behaviors and whatever else. It's going to be a struggle. So we need to move as fast as she can without, without pushing too much, okay? So when we move on to an object like this, um, tubular is important and small is important. We're gonna get the lips out of the way. We're gonna have just Good. Just a split second of a hold. I'm not asking for anything else. I've got my hands here to help direct her to keep her head up. A lot of times dogs are going to try and drop their head. You can see all kinds of things. But back in here, lips out of the way. Good. Okay. So that is a really, really, really good start with hold for her. She's making this look easy. Everything so far she's made look pretty easy. Every dog is going to hit a wall. We will find it, but first, we're gonna call that the end of this session for starting hold with her. We're gonna to move to the next dog. On to dog number two. 
we have Shock with us. We'll do just a brief warm up. And if you remember, she was the most comfortable out of the bunch. So we're not gonna do much here. Very comfortable, very confident. She's our hyper mover. So we're gonna 100% have to clip her up down here. Allow her to kind of settle into this. Don't give her too much room. We don't want her to try and jump off, but we do need her to realize there is an end of the leash and where exactly is it at? Good. So we're gonna move right into the hold work here. Again, fingers, this is going to be important. One other benefit of fingers is this gives you a way to kind of hold on here. Lots of tonguing, a little more mouthing happening here. She's trying to get my mouth, my hand out of her mouth. Good, split second. That was all that we were looking for. She stopped for a second, good. I'm able to mark that and say, that's what we need to build off of. Good. Now, if we have more, <laughs> she's like, I did such a good job. I did such a good job. I just want to touch you. All right. Um, this can be something, if you get a dog that starts pulling and fighting a little bit, having a hold of their collar as well, will give you a little more control over what's happening here. Good, nice job. You can take a step away, especially, whoo, everywhere. You can take a step away, she tries to come with. This gets a little bit of foot movement and kind of helps to reset dog's brains. Sometimes your dog's gonna get really comfortable in one area. And then as you try and move or you do anything else, it essentially resets their brain and then it'll act like they don't really know what's happening. So she did a couple really good reps. We did a little reset here. See how she's fighting more? Good. A little bit of aversive noise. Ah, 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 something like that can help. <laughs> you are a dork, sit up. Do another wrap. Good. That's really, really good. Um, I'm going to move on to a bumper with her. She's figured this out very quickly. There are going to be dogs. I don't know if we'll have any in this collection, but there are going to be some dogs that fight a lot and struggle with this. And you may be on holding your hand for two or three or four sessions until you get it right. If you're struggling that much though, please reach out patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. There may be something simple that I can help you with a video consult. You'll be here working video here. You're going to have your air AirPods or earbuds or air earbuds in. That was a movie. I think, um, headphones on so that you can hear me, but I'm not distracting your session. I'll be right in your ear saying, Hey, make this little change. Do something else. Stug's an extremely strong retriever. So, she will pose an issue that we're going to kind of work through as we go. Is she responding to what we're teaching and what we're asking, or is she just doing it because she wants to? We'll have to discern that later and I'll show you how to. So settling her down, we've got the bump, the buck in here. This is a one inch dowel. Again, she's trying to throw, spit this out a little bit. I'm helping, I'm not giving any leeway here keeping your head where it needs to be. If your dog's trying to drop their head, she's instantly trying to flip this out of her mouth, okay? If she's trying to pick her head up, we pull it back down a little bit. If she's trying to lift her, drop her head, we gotta lift it back up. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Good, there you go. Now, one thing that I saw, she settled a little bit there, which is good, but she was doing just a little like baby mouthing. Pay attention to everything. Everything can grow from just a little tiny thing to a giant problem. So we're gonna watch that on this next rep. A little aversive noises are gonna help you a lot. That, ah, quit. Good, good girl. Yeah, you are full of yourself. Let's do, uh, 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 let's do one more rep here. Put this in here. Uh, uh, uh. Good. Not asking for much more than that. Just a split second. This says, look, you can hold something in your mouth for a second. Nice job. Now, these, this looks very much like I'm ready to do more. I could do more. I, I want to do all the things. Then you see a little yawn like that. And that's a sign of just a little bit of mental stress. Okay. 
Those are signs that are often overlooked, often missed. That's why we need to keep the session short, build off of little pieces and feel like, hey, we did something good. Let's come back to it tomorrow. You'll do way better with your dog as you go. Let's grab the next pup here. All righty, step two with clay. We're clipped up here. Ooh, hello, come on. You can see starting off way more comfortable. Good. Good boy. Clear sign that we're ready to, to move forward here. We'll get him clipped up. You see how, I wanna point out how little time I spent on that. One of the biggest mistakes that we see people make when I'm helping on Patreon review sessions like this is they spend way too much time warming things up and they've got 10 or 15 minutes wrapped up into a warm up. They haven't even started training. The dog's already way past ready to be done. So a little distraction outside, not the end of the world. We're gonna move him up here. We're gonna start with the fingers just the same. Now differences so far, I'm just gonna help him sit so he's not floating. He's not actually closing his mouth. He's kind of like, Floating, uh, I'll just let this fall out. We need to make sure that there is a little bit of pressure and that's where the mouth difference, okay? Pulling his head down, he's trying to float it up there. Good, that was just a split second of hold in the right zone where I actually had just a small amount of pressure, not just, oh, they're kind of sitting here and I'm being weird and not closing my mouth. Some dogs will do that. Little distraction outside. Try and find yourself an area that you have minimal distractions. Uh, 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 uh. Distractions are gonna happen. We just have to make adjustments. So he's proving, he's talking about height and size of your table a little bit. Uh, 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 uh. Still looking for a split second. Tonguing, he's doing different things. It's not what we wanna mark. We need, good, we need that. Head in the right position, holding with just a little bit of pressure, no tonguing, no rolling, no paying attention to something else. None of those things need to be happening. If you mark bad things, he will continue to do bad things. And settled is what we need. Holding is what we need. Good. Now, I want to point this out. We are in step two, working on hold. I haven't said that word to him yet. Like everything, we have to develop a behavior first, show him what we're looking for, then we can apply a cue afterward. He doesn't understand English, so if we start using a cue before he's doing what he's supposed to do, it can be confusing in the long run. Pressure here, pushing back, adjust the dog's body on the table a little bit. Uh, 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 uh. Good, nice job. Reset his brain just a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. You can see drastically less confident and busy body up here um, comparatively to shock, but that's not a bad thing. We have just enough distraction outside. Uh, 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 uh. Just adjusting him. I want him to focus over here. It's okay that there's distractions. We can work through them. Uh, uh, uh. That was a big distraction. Good. I'm gonna give him that one here. We'll give him just a second, and then we'll go back to, um, we'll go back to wrapping. Don't get too worked up about anything that's happening in your training sessions. You have to read off of your individual dog, and you have to be able to work through those things, okay? All right, so that's out of the way. We're gonna pull focus back here. We're gonna just reset his brain. I wanna pull his focus back to what we're doing. Good, nice job, okay? We've got a little bit of a reset here. Ooh, there you go, okay. So we'll come back in here like this. You see after the reset of his body and different things, he's going back to worse, Mouth open, head flailing things a little bit. Good, that was good, come on. There you go, come on. That little bit of movement. I know he's gonna hit the chain very, very quickly. Good, much better, okay? Taking that split second just to wait. Helping him. 
uh, 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 uh. There's nothing over there that you need to see. Good. That's a really good place for him. With the distractions that we had in this session, I'm not going to take him to trying to do a uh, Bach, okay? We're going to put him down, we'll do another session just like this, and then we will move into the retrieving buck after that. Let's get him off the table. Come on. Off backwards every time. All right, so we're here for Legacies next. We're going to start it just the same as everybody else's. Get used to the table. She was drastically more reserved, but comfortable. Able to move up and down the table, right here. But the, the thing that we saw with her to begin with um, is reliance on me. Focus on me here. Hey, 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 let's just go down here. Sometimes you kind of got to play to that dog, basically. What are they doing? And we can kind of use that to our advantage. If she's more comfortable going that way, it's not the end of the world. But we do need to recognize that's happening and then build back this way. Good. Perfect, okay? Big thing that I'm gonna point out here. Reliance on me is happening already. You can see that from a huge standpoint. She stopped right there. She stopped right there. I took a step forward, kind of out and away from the table, just a smidgeny, and then she moved up and ate the treat, okay? That's reliance on handler. If you're seeing that, you need to be aware of it, and we'll show you, because she's going to have this issue. We'll show you how we work through it as, as we go. All right, so straight into, I'm also 100% comfortable with her confidence on the table. She's walking up and down fine. That's no issue. So we're gonna go right into hold work here. Two fingers here, get her kinda in a comfortable-ish spot. She is 100% letting it float there. Head up here, good, good girl. We'll do another wrap, marking that split second. That's all we're looking for to begin with, but there's a little tongue action happening. Another quick distraction walking by. Good, that's really good. Come on, there you go. She's moving, sit down. Sitting, standing, doesn't matter. Um, I just want her to be comfortable and she's kind of like half cocked in her standing sitting position. So just sit, that'll be easier on you. Good, that's a really good hold. A very settled, very poised puppy dog. Um, she's gonna make a lot of this pretty easy. Uh, every single one of these dogs, like I said, will hit a wall. Uh, they'll hit a point where they push back a little bit more. We'll see what each one of them is. Good. This is really, really nice holds. There's no tongue action, there's nothing happening, just a very settled hold, waiting. Good girl. Let's move on to this bad boy. Throw that in there, get these gums out of the way. She doesn't need to be biting down on her own lips. Trying to throw it instantly, open in her mouth, that's normal. Okay, just a split second. Don't instantly move to hands away, stepping back. Don't do that. It's too big of an ask. We want just a little bit here. Uh, uh, uh. Get those lips out of the way. Make sure to do that each time. See, as soon as I moved my hands just a little bit, went to open her mouth. Good, that's a good job. Let's do another one. There you go. That resets their brain. It's kind of a silly little thing, but it's important to do through your session. Just a little bit of movement. Good. Nice job. Come on. Come on. There you go. Good. This is more of a conditioning process, and we want to think about it that way. Again, the smaller steps we take, the faster we're going to get there. We're going to call that her session here. First steps of hold for her we want oops, we want this to look a little bit uncomfortable coming off I want her to feel that I should stay on the table category and that's why we come off backwards and we lift dogs onto the table all right we've got doc we're gonna get him warmed up here 
he did a really nice job getting comfortable on the table. <laughs> He's probably as close to exactly what you would hope to get. A dog that was a smidge reserved to begin with picked up on it pretty quickly. He's comfortable, he's confident, he seems like he's ready to move on. Um, we've seen a good variety. Dogs that are on the borderline of not super confident to way too confident, and he's a really, a really good balance. Let's go ahead and start straight away here. Floating again, I need him to, I'm gonna adjust his head so that we can get his mouth closed. There's a tongue. If you get too much tongue, you can push that tongue into their teeth just a little bit, and that says, ouch, hey, maybe don't do that. So just a very small correction, quiet. Good, that's a good job, that's a good job. Come here, let's do another rep here. Good, really, really fast. Why? Because we waited until the perfect wrap happened. We marked a good one so he knew what to do moving forward. Nope. There was his tongue trying to come out. He tried just a little bit there and thought maybe I shouldn't do it and then a big one. Good, nice job. Nice job. Let's do another wrap here. Come on. I want you to slide up this way just a little bit. Good. Good. Nice job, buddy. Instantly moving to the right thing. That's perfect. Good. We're ready to move on to this with him. Go ahead and slide this up here. Get all of his gums out of the way. Good. Now, all of these dogs, he was trying to hold on to that. That's a good thing. We will encourage that more later. Good, nice job. Again, still kind of trying to hold on to that. He's gonna make this part seem really, really natural, which is important but we also need to make sure that he is responding to what we're asking um, as we go down the road. Gums out of the way. Good, nice job, nice job. You can kind of roll them down, those big jowls and flues, big lips up. Nice job. That's all we're going to do. Very short session, very confident. You can see how he's happy, he's enthusiastic, he's ready to continue going. Every dog has a little bit different personality, but we need to cater the training sessions to them. It's important to keep your sessions short. The smaller steps you take, the faster you will get to the end. The guy with the pink gun, we will see you in the next video.